This is the very future of our planet. Global warming and that, and a lot of it's a hoax. It's a hoax. The world's never gotten this warm this fast. Still a scientific theory that has not been proven. What's crazy about climate change is how many people have strong opinions about it and at the same time are fuzzy on the facts. So I say it's time to go back to understand what we know about climate change and how we know it. My name is David Schechter. I'm a veteran reporter and now I work for you. I'm taking real people out on the road to get their questions answered. And you're coming along for the ride. This is Verify Road Trip. I need to sense it, I need to feel it, I need to see it. You know, if it's happening, I need to be shown this is what's happening. That's Justin. He's 38, a father of two, and a roofing contractor. Justin is politically conservative, and like most people in his social circle, he rejects the idea of climate change. Hey, hey, hey. hey welcome in. How's it going? David. I'm Justin. Nice, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Together, we're going to explore three questions. One, is the climate changing abnormally? No. Not from whenever I was a kid. I mean, my whole lifetime, I haven't seen anything different. Two, are humans to blame? I don't think so. I don't think that they can change what the world is doing. And three, how urgent is this? Zero to ten, I think this climate change is probably a three um, due to uh, just, a, just it's just a pattern in time. Over time, more and more climate change research papers agree that it's happening and people are to blame. Only a small fraction now disagree. Storms and droughts and floods, those things have always been with us. Dr. John Christie is a scientist who disagrees, and he is the state climatologist of Alabama. We're going to go around and I guess see other scientists and stuff uh, that's going to tell me that we are wrong. What, what kind of questions should I ask them? Just ask the question, has the ice el melted there before? And the answer is absolutely yes. When they talk about sea level rise, you could say, well, has sea level risen before? The answer is absolutely yes. The, the real weather data and climate data indicate it's just not much of an effect at all. What are you picking up here? Well, I'm picking up that I'm right. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's so many of us out there, but yet so many, I guess, experts say that it is happening. We're headed to Texas Tech for Climate Change 101. I'm David. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet Catherine. you. Hey, I'm Justin. Justin, nice to meet nice you too. too. That's Professor Catherine Hayhoe, an internationally recognized climatologist. During the Industrial Revolution, what's the number one thing that we did differently? We burned coal. Exactly. The side effect is that when you burn coal and gas and oil, it produces carbon dioxide. Catherine's telling us about carbon dioxide, CO2. It's found naturally in the Earth's atmosphere. As the sun's rays bounce off the planet, CO2 retains some of that heat. The rest escapes into space. When we add more carbon to the atmosphere, that traps in more of the sun's heat. As far back as we can go in history, like I'm talking millions of years, we have no record of this much carbon going into the atmosphere this fast. Mm. Uh, being in the classroom like that, uh, her being a professor, I mean, she was definitely very passionate. Catherine is the co-author of this report from NASA and 12 other U.S. government agencies. Climatologists looked at the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. It goes up and down for hundreds of thousands of years, but never above this line. Never until 1950, when the amount of CO2 in the atmosphere blows past the line. Okay, let's zoom into modern times. There's that rising carbon dioxide. Now here is global temperature. It's up 1.5 degrees Fahrenheit during the same time. Catherine says that is having major effects. So here in Texas, what we're seeing is, first of all, our heavy rainfall is getting more frequent. It's making hurricanes stronger. And then out here in West Texas, we get droughts. And it turns out that the hotter it gets, the more intense our droughts are getting too. And then, of course, we're getting more extreme summer heat as well. He, he was 0 to 10 was a 3 on urgency. What are you 0 to 10 on urgency? Um, three or four years ago, I would have been an 8. Now I think I'm a 9. Wow. If you saw what I saw, I mean, I'm kind of like the doctor. I'm actually seeing the scans, and the stuff we see is worse. 
If we wait till everybody in Dallas sees what I see already, it's going to be too late. So that's why it's so important to talk about this today. I'm, I'm looking at things a little bit different now. Um, she gave me some information that I have never in my life imagined that I, you know, would, would hear, I guess. It's mind boggling. Now we're north of Austin at Interspace Caverns with Dr. Jay Banner. All right, when we get down to the bottom, if you're taller than 5'7", watch your head. Jay's a geologist at the University of Texas. He's guiding us deep inside a cave because while we did not have thermometers thousands of years ago, caves are one way to tell us what the climate used to be like. And he's taking us off the path where there are no lights and things get tight. So it's gonna get low and we're gonna to get to a point where we're gonna crawl. We get to a certain point and it gets so narrow. We're having our helmets on, we have gloves on. We're like squeezing through, trying to maneuver our bodies. I had, a, I had a couple moments of pretty good panic. I didn't think my fat butt would actually get through there for a minute. What does the study of a cave tell us about our changing climate? Long-term changes, things we can't capture in the time we've been able to study climate through instruments like um, rain gauges, thermometers, things like that. Those records go back about 120 years or so. Jay's telling us the dripping water in here is what creates these hanging formations. On the inside, they have these little rings that can tell us what the climate used to be like on the surface. You can it's, see the rings. You can see the rings, just like tree rings. Oh yeah, I have no idea that's what it looked like Turn inside. There. Yeah. From his research, Jay can infer periods in Earth's history when CO2 levels were on the rise. You know those CO2 curves you see? How they go up from like the 1970s on up to now? And you know, it goes like, you calculate that rate of change. You could calculate what we have from our past records of CO2 and calculate those changes. The rate of change happening today is 40,000 times faster. So that's the difference. It's, it's not the fact that it hasn't happened before, it's the fact that it's just increasingly rapid now that's right than it was exactly at that time before right we're traveling to texas a m and we're talking to dr andy dessler a climatologist he joined us for a cup of coffee near campus david. Hi, david andy says proving that carbon emissions from humans are the cause of climate change is a bit like a criminal investigation. CO2 has blood all over it. It's that blood of the climate system all over it. I like and that so, analogy. And right so if you want to argue good. that it's not CO2, not only do you have to advance a hypothesis, but you also have to say, why does CO2 look so guilty? Let's look at some of Andy's possible suspects. Is it the Earth's orbit getting closer to the sun? No. He says that kind of change would take thousands of years. Is it the sun getting hotter? No. The sun is in a phase where it's actually generating less heat. Is it events like El Nino which change the Earth's weather patterns? Andy says there is no research that supports the idea that these events can cause long-term changes in the climate. So that leaves carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gases. Andy says the historical connection is strong between increased carbon and increased temperature. CO2 is guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. Not beyond a shadow of a doubt, there's always a shadow of a doubt, but beyond a reasonable doubt, there's really no question that we're responsible for the warming. Is there anything you can pinpoint here in Texas that you can go, this? Yeah, probably the summer of 2011. Lakes are drying up all over North Texas. The 71st day this year at or above 100. That's once again, number one on the all time list. When it comes to Texas summers, the drier the summer, the hotter the temperature. And there have been some really hot, dry years here, but nothing compares to the summer of 2011. Scientists have concluded because of climate change that extremely hot summer days like we saw in 2011 are now 10 times more likely to happen. So, you know, you'll still have average years, you'll still have cool years, but when you have a hot year, it's going to be worse. So we've learned the Earth's climate has changed before, but this is different. In a matter of decades, we've spiked the atmosphere with carbon and other greenhouse gases, and that's causing the temperature on Earth to rise. But what's Justin thinking? Am I convinced yet uh, on 
an actual real problem, I don't know, the jury's still out. So Justin is not convinced, but this journey's not over. We're going to Alaska. You said that you needed to see it to believe it. Yeah, I said prove it to me. So here we are. That's next time on Verify Road Trip.